This is the final video on this array series and why not show you how to take your array and change it to be a different data structure or collect important information out of it. This is the video that will really make you love working with arrays. Let's get to it. I've already shown you how to create an array from something else and for this one I'll be doing the opposite. I would like to introduce you to reduce. Reduce is not necessarily a method to transform an array into something specifically, but for being so powerful and flexible, it can be easily used to accomplish just that. It is also a powerful option to extract or collect information from the array, perform many operations, format and transform the array itself. For a cliche demonstration, I have this array of numbers and I want to know the total sum of these numbers. On the array, I call reduce and reduce takes a function and a value to initialize the iteration with. The function is called with that initial value, the item, the item index, and the array itself. You do whatever in this function, but you must return the updated version of that initial value. For this initial value, I set it to be zero, because we will count from zero. Inside the function, I return the value plus the item of the array, which will be the numbers in the array. As it loops, the value is incremented by the array item. At the end, the reduce returns the final state of that initial value we set as a second parameter. Just like that, now we know what is the sum of all items in an array. This value is called the accumulator, and it can be anything you want. For this example, I have this array of animals, and I want to know how many of each animal there is. So I set a reduce, and for the initial value, I set an empty object. For every iteration, I will be setting a key in that object to be the animal name and equal to a 1 if it was not there already or incremented otherwise. Then I return that object for the next iteration. If I check the return, I have an object key by the animal's name and the total count for each of them. I hope you are starting to see how you can change your array to spit out any data you want, including change the array to be some other data type. For the final reduce example, I have here a list of users and because every time I need a user, I have to go through the array and find it by ID, I decided that this is too expensive to do all the time. I want it to be an object instead, so I can just grab the user by its ID. I set my reducer with an empty object as initial value and return the object with the user key as the user ID mapped to the user itself. The return value is an object key by the ID that I can easily read and know if, the, if it is there or not. I can even simplify this even further with the rest operator with the same result. Now my array is an object. There is also reduce write, which goes through the array right to left, from the end of the array to the beginning. It still works the same way with the only difference being where it starts looping from. I can also change an array into a map using array from and call entries on the array and pass it to the new map initialization. That gives me a map. I can create a set just by passing the array. This will eliminate any duplicate since everything in a set must be unique. I can even change this set back to the array using array from and this is a good way to eliminate duplicates from arrays. I can change an array into a string using the join method and pass an optional delimiter. I can even change an array into an object by using object assign just like this. Please check this channel for videos on these data types. There you have it. Thank you for sticking around with me through the series and for liking and subscribing to this channel. Catch you on the next one. Peace.